Just after 6 a.m. on this Friday morning. Good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for starting off your day with us here on Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. Now let's get right to our coverage. As you see behind me, we are Bulldog Central here. We will have coverage of all of the madness all morning long. But first, let's get you right over to our meteorologist, Thomas Patrick, with a look at the forecast. Thomas, a lot happening this weekend. We have Easter. Today is Good Friday. But what does the weather have in store? Yeah, weather actually should be great for this upcoming weekend today. Just one more chance for any scattered showers or thunderstorms. By the way, I just want to mention if you're wondering who's winning our office bracket, it's Nicole and she's running away with it. She's so far out of the rest of us getting so many picks right. But right now it's 34 degrees. Beautiful looking sky as we are about 40 minutes away to sunrise here and we will get a decent amount of sunshine today because yesterday's stray showers and mountain snow showers. They're drifting off to the east. If you're making it all the way to Lookout Pass, you might run into some snowfall at the higher elevations there, but it will be a quiet and dry start to the day. But like yesterday, we'll see a couple of those showers try to pop up in the heat of the day, just tracking our northern areas for the most action for this afternoon before a very sunny and an even warmer weekend ahead. Well, we said it earlier, but tonight the five seed Gonzaga men's team will take on one seed Purdue in the Sweet 16. Our sports director, Travis Green, is now in Detroit with more on tonight's matchup. Gonzaga's loss to Purdue was way back in November at the Maui Invitational. The Zags dropped that one 73 to 63. But if there's one thing we've learned about this team, it's they've progressively gotten better and better as the season's progressed. Talking with the team today, they made one thing clear. This Gonzaga team is different than the one that lost in Hawaii. We were a different team then. It was only our third or fourth game at the time, and uh, the roles were, weren't as defined as they are now. And so uh, we just got a whole better feel for the game and uh, who we are on this team. It's a completely different team. We got to see them so early in the season, and we gave them, I'd say, a pretty good fight. Uh, and now that we're such a new and, and experienced and different team, I think. Uh, It'll be a lot of fun. While the Zags have changed, so have the Boilermakers. Both sides say it can help having played each other, but a lot of basketball has passed. I think the experience of playing them can, gives you a reference point like it gives them a reference point, but I think it means very little. Both of us will change, but we're not going to change that much. I mean, we kind of are who we are, especially when you're dealing with somebody as special as a Edie. You know, we've we've at least experienced it, so we're not trying to describe it to our guys. What hasn't changed is the mismatch of Zach Eady. The seven foot four star is a problem for anyone in the country. He scored 25 points in the last matchup and is having himself quite the March Madness, scoring 53 points and grabbing 35 rebounds over Purdue's two games in the tourney. The Zags will have to slow him down in order to advance to the Elite Eight. Well, it is very much key. Um, I just think we just need to slow him down. You know, he is going to get his. You know, he's, he's such a dominant force down there. Um, you know, he, I'm sure he's going to make a few, you know, but it's just it's just about how he limit his, his touches and limit his, you know, his buckets and his rebound and everything. It's going to be a physical one, something that I look forward to, something that we look forward to as a whole. And, uh, yeah, it just got to be physical and, and just continue to trust that, that we'll get stops. And there you heard from Graham E.K. He's looking forward to the matchup with Zach Eady. He's one of the guys that will likely be guarding Eady throughout. There's a seven-inch height difference between those two. Reporting from Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Travis Green, Grim 2 Sports. Again, the Gonzaga men take on Purdue tonight in the Sweet 16. Tip-off for their game is scheduled for 4.39 p.m. You can watch that game on TBS. Well, this morning, the Zags are connected to a viral tweet with a very inaccurate claim made by a Michigan lawmaker. The tweet is from Matt Maddock and was posted Wednesday. It shows buses in a plane at Detroit Metro Airport. Maddox claimed that the buses were, quote, loaded up with illegal invaders. Now, this is completely false. An airport authority spokesperson confirmed the photos in Maddox's post shows that the buses that transported Gonzaga and the other teams that were competing in the NCAA tournament. Flight radars even show that no Allegiant aircraft, except for the one from Spokane, immediately in or around the airport at the time. So Krim 2 did reach out to a Gonzaga spokesperson who says, quote, I can't solidly say that our team that was our team. We did fly an Allegiant plane in, but so did a few other teams. X has now added a community note to the tweet. It has not been taken down, though. So we do have another round of Sweet 16 games today. So here on Krim 2, just after 4 o'clock, North Carolina State has a tough battle against Marquette. And then directly following that game, Duke is taking on the University of Houston. 
Well, if you couldn't tell already, it's a huge weekend for the Zags with both the men and women in the Sweet 16. Gonzaga is just one of four schools that advanced both teams this far into the postseason. So Crim 2's Brandon T. Jones is joining us live near Gonzaga's campus this morning. So Brandon, what do we need to know ahead of the women's game tonight? Yeah, good morning, gentlemen. Well, what we need to know is that the Zags are taking on the number one seed Texas Longhorns tonight. That tips off at 7 p.m. over in Portland at the Moda Center. So hopefully a great turnout for some of the Zags fans. It's pretty close nearby. Pacific Northwest fans show up. In terms of this matchup against Texas, this is the first time the two programs will be playing against each other. Both teams average about 81 points per game, and Texas typically gives up about 57 points per game. GU, on the other hand, they only give up about 60 points per game. So with that in mind, the Zags are approaching this matchup match up with respect for their opponent and assessing areas that will help them win the game. Texas is a very good team. Um, they are very good rebounders. Um, that's their biggest asset is their rebound, how many rebounds they get a game, how great they are at, how physical they are. Um, so one of our biggest things is just trying to box them out, take it away. Um, it's a tall order because they are so good at it. It's kind of their superpower. Um, but part of our game plan is just kind of taking away those rebounds. So again, 7 p.m. tonight, that is the time you need to know, and the game will be aired nationally on ESPN. In terms of locally, if you want to go ahead and watch with some of your fellow fans, all you got to do is go nearby here to campus at GU and go over to NOLI because they're hosting a watch party for both the men and women's game tonight. But for now, reporting live in Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crimson News. And be sure to join us at Crime 2 here for a 9 p.m. special edition newscast. We'll have a live report from Detroit with a breakdown of the men's game against Purdue, plus all of the highlights from the women as they face off against Texas in Portland. Now it's not just the Zags. This morning, the WSU women's basketball team is just one win away from the WBIT championship game. Our sports anchor Andrew Quinn has more on the Cougs nail-biting win over Toledo. Well, the Washington State women's basketball team was looking to make it to the semifinals of the inaugural WBIT tournament, hosting a pesky Toledo team at Beasley Coliseum. This was a tight game throughout, so pick it up with three minutes left. Cougs down four until Jessica Clark buries the jumper to cut the deficit to two. Now with under a minute to play, it's Beyonce B with the jumper and we are tied. Toledo now trying to retake the lead, but Bella Murakatete comes up with the huge steal, which led to this. With just four seconds left in the game, Murakatete with the free throw line. Jay, oh baby, that's butter. That is nothing but nylon. The Cougs by two with three seconds left. Toledo with one final shot, but Quinesha Lockett's attempt does not go, and the Cougs advance to the WBIT semifinals with a 63-61 victory. Here's Cami Etheridge on that game winner. I've coached Bella five years, and I've never set up a play for her to take the last shot. Um, but have a lot of confidence. She spent a lot of time in the gym trying to make, you know, 15 and 17 footers. So and that's what you just love, the experience of these seniors that don't want to be done playing. WSU will take on the Illinois Fighting Illini in Indianapolis on Monday. That's all for sports. And keeping with the basketball theme for the NCAA tournament today, both men and women, as you heard, both playing, both had to travel at least a little bit. The men are in Detroit, where Michigan has been, well, going to be sunny for today, so it looks like a pretty nice forecast there with a high of 56 degrees. Meanwhile, Portland, they got some sunshine yesterday, feeling a lot better compared to the very rainy days they've had recently. The women tip off closer to 7 p.m. for tonight. And of course, not just basketball, but it's baseball season as well. The Mariners had their opening day yesterday, and this weekend's forecast is looking a lot sunnier for these next three games. 54 degrees for that first pitch at 640 tonight against the Red Sox. Staying in the mid 50s for those game time temperatures all three days this weekend. So if you are traveling to the west side, you're going to have plenty of sunshine to work with all across the northwest.